The pickleball landscape has been changing drastically over the last eight years that I've been playing. I've played over 200 paddles and reviewed over 150 paddles and I've never seen the type of diversity in the pickleball field that I do right now. They're using different materials, different shapes, different processes, and different technology. So today what I'm gonna do is just compare a couple different technologies to you. I'm gonna introduce you to a couple companies that you might not have heard of and one that you have heard of. And these are all new paddle drops by these companies. They're all similar size, similar shape, similar specs as far as the pure metrics go. They have similar swing weight. They have similar twist weight and they have similar shape in design. But I wanna highlight the differences in in the architecture of them and a little bit of the material differences in them and then we'll talk about what everybody cares about the price and who they fit for so let me introduce you to the players in this game we have three paddles that I'm going to represent today and one is the mage pro gen 2 paddle from Hudef. now don't let the Gen 2, Gen 3 fool you. This is their second generation of their Mage Pro. So the first Mage Pro, I, I reviewed that a while. It's one of the best under $100 paddles that I've played. It was a Gen 1 carbon fiber face. This is now the Gen 2 version of that paddle. They have done the, the, all the, all the fixings. We've got unibody, thermoformed, foam injected walls, and now we've got a carbon fiber and Kevlar blended face. So they've upped all the technology on this paddle, and now this paddle retails for $170. So they've thrown a lot of technology into this paddle. It is a really solid paddle. It's got one of the smallest grip circumferences out of the paddles I'm showing you today with only a four and an eighth inch grip. So very, very small grip for people with smaller hands or ladies. This paddle is a great choice to feel great in your hands and you can always add over wraps to make the grip a little bit different. The second player in today's game is by Daimon, D-Y-M-O-N. It is a company you might not have heard of. This is the Mayhem from Daimon. They come in a 14 millimeter and a 16 millimeter, and it is different in the sense that this has a Kevlar core. It has everything else that I just mentioned before in the Mage Pro. It's got a thermoform unibody, foam injected walls with a thermoformed Kevlar core, and then they put the carbon fiber T700 face on top of that. So this is very much technology in this paddle. Very similar swing weights to the Hudef Mage Pro, very similar twist weight, and very similar on the spin metrics. But we're gonna get into the differences here in a little bit. So the Quartz is the new paddle coming out from 6.0 on August 4th. And this paddle is a true unibody Gen 1 carbon face paddle. So we're going back to the Gen 1. This is before the Thermoform Unibody came out with the Gen 2 and before the Gen 3 new wave of pickleball, which is the, the new moving cores and the more explosive cores that are coming out in the Yolas and the new companies that are coming out with the Gen 3 paddles, the true carbon Gen 3 paddles. This quartz is old school, but it is completely different than the first two, although the swing metrics still are very identical. So let's get into the differences between these three players, who they're for, and why you should care. So first off, let's talk about the major, major thing that people are caring about right now, and that is spin. Spin, 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 spin. I can't tell you how many times I've reviewed a paddle that has moderate to low spin. People don't buy it. Spin is the what people want. And when carbon face paddles came out, spin became the new norm. Spin became the buzzword. That's all people cared about, every material. Everything people are trying to do is usually revolving around some type of spin metric and they wanna be high up there. So first off, we're gonna grade these three paddles in the area of spin. When we wanna look at spin, we're gonna look at the way the paddle performs. Now this is not necessarily a fair comparison when it comes to paddle shape. Traditionally speaking, the hybrid paddle shape is gonna be able to generate a little bit less spin than the normal type of paddle that has an extended handle. So this is very similar to the old school Engage Maverick. If we're gonna go new school, we can look at the Baller Pro. That one has a, a big extended handle. So this has a five and a half inch handle and a very narrow head. So while this one still has a very usable five inch handle, it's a little bit like 5.25 inch handle, It 
is a little bit wider at the head, so it's a little bit harder to get over the ball. So in the spin metrics out of these three paddles, the Mayhem takes first place, the, Ma the Mage Pro takes second place, and the 6-0 uh, Quartz takes third place. Now, when we talk about the spin metrics, the difference between these is only about 300 points on the spin metrics by all the independent testers. So we're talking about, you know, one that's in the in the in the 2100 range with this new mayhem and then all the way down to around the 1925 1950 range for the quartz. So the spin metrics are not that different. This paddle here has the lightest swing weight out of these three paddles. This paddle is only 104 on the swing weight. So this is not a power paddle. But the difference is with a 104 swing weight, it's going to be faster at the net. So it, it has faster responses, even with the different paddle shape. This is a 16 by 8, whereas the Mayhem is a 16 and a half by 7 and a half. Same with the Mage Pro. It's more of the, the flare and the taper here. So at the net, these paddles in this order a little bit faster at the net. With this one being a little bit slower because it has the highest swing weight around 119, 120 with this without lead tape. Now I'm talking about without lead tape here with just stock playing these out of the gate. Speed at the net, this is going to be the order that I would put them in. We've got the Quartz, then the Mayhem, and then the Mage Pro when it comes to speed at the net. The next metric that most people go to is power. How powerful is the paddle? Where does it fall in the power spectrum? What do the stats look like? Now, very similar to what we talked about before, the, the typical answer to this is the higher the swing weight, the higher the power of the paddle. Um, and then it really comes down to the velocity that you can generate as far as power in the, in the head speed, right? So if the higher swing weight paddle, a lot, of tip, a lot of times it's a little bit slower coming through the ball, but when it plows through, it has more finished power. So it has more power. These were very hard for me to differentiate out of the two. So out of the Mayhem and out of the Mage Pro, they're very similar in power metrics. With, with it's very hard by by glance to even know the difference of the power metrics by feel. You can't do it. You got to go to the stats. They're within a couple miles of each other, an hour difference. And so it, I couldn't tell you right now picking these up which one would be more powerful till I hit a hundred shots with it and measured it myself. But I would call them very even in the pe power metrics when it comes to the Mayhem and the Mage Pro. Now the Quartz is not a power paddle. Now remember, this is coming in for a different category. This is more of an entry level paddle, very, very forgiving, very control oriented. So it doesn't even belong in the conversation when it comes to power, it doesn't have it. It has great spin, you're not gonna, with 104 swing weight, this paddle is not gonna go anywhere. You're gonna have to add a lot of weight to this. But just like Annalee Waters uses a shape paddle very similar to this, and she puts weight all the way around it, it makes it up to a nine. So as an eight ounce paddle, putting this thing up to a nine ounce paddle changes this and makes it like a 122 swing weight. Then that puts this into a really weird category because at this paddle shape with that swing weight, with that kind of spin metric, this becomes a high performance paddle, even though it's an entry level paddle, just like the TKO Bantam. They, they're very similar constructed, exactly the same if you look at them. Polypropylene with a Gen 1 face plate on it, very similar. Now, power is the new game, power, 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 power. But if you play like me, I've never needed help from the paddle. In fact, I need to take as much power off of paddles I play. So when I play a power paddle, I struggle very, very much to learn how to keep it in the court. So with the Mayhem and the Mage Pro, I'm familiar with their paddle style before, so I've really learned to adjust my grip strength. I am a power player that loves control. So I always lean towards the control paddle. And this isn't even a real fair game between the three of these. these this paddle here, the Quartz, is by far way more control than these guys. Even with a 104 swing weight, this has a high twist weight of over six. It's like 6.42. So it's one of the highest swing weight, the highest twist weight paddles that have been measured. Like in the high sixes is like the highest ones. And I think there's some that go up into seven. And when you add lead tape, when you put lead tape around this thing, this twist weight on this guy gets up into the high sevens towards eight when it comes to twist weight. So you can take a paddle like this and modify it and make it play like 
like a more high performance paddle, but you gotta start with a very light paddle to get there so you're not killing your arm. Now remember, when you add lead tape and you increase the twist weight and you increase the swing weight of a paddle, you're going to put more pressure on your elbow and your shoulder. So always be aware that that is going to change the metrics, but you can make a lighter paddle play with more power, more pop, and more twist weight and be more stable. But when it comes to control, this paddle, it, it kicks the crap out of these two. These paddles are more power oriented, more towards the all court. With weight on, added to these, these would become power paddles pure and through and through. You can get these things very easily up with up to over 125 in swing weight by adding very little lead tape to the end of these. And because of the paddle shape, you're going to increase power and pop on these guys significantly. My recommendation, if you are starting out and you're a beginner, you really want to go with the quartz. The quartz is under $100. That's why this paddle is pretty much amazing. It is a performance paddle at a uh, introductory price. This guy here feels plush. It is soft and it is controllable and very forgiving. It's got a sweet spot the size of Australia, because that's where it's from, and it's huge. You can hit anywhere on this paddle and it will be stable and it will get to where you need it to go. If you need put away power, this guy's not going to get you there as is. You're going to have to add lead tape and you're going to have to play with the position of it to see what gives you the most put away power for it. But if you're starting out, this paddle is a great starting paddle at a very affordable price. Now, if you want power and spin, I'm going to, I hate to do this to you. I'm going to have to tell you to look at paddle shape. Both of these guys are so similarly close in their metrics that you really are gonna have to go by paddle shape. Do you like the hybrid shape? Do you like, I give this one a little bit higher twist weight, a little bit bigger sweet spot. It's marginal because of this Kevlar core. So it's really hard for me to pick which one is which when it comes to the one that's the most forgiving because of the way that they're constructed. So I would really call this a lateral move and say, okay, which one do you like the best? They both have similar spin metrics and they both have similar power metrics. So really it gets down to shape and the way you like the handle. The one differentiator I'll say is this handle feels a little bit more beveled. So you get a little bit more of an oblong feel of this, a little bit thinner grip. This is a four and an eighth. This guy here is a four and a quarter at the 14 and a four and a half when it comes to the 16 millimeter. So this one here is gonna have a little bit thicker handle, whereas this Mage Pro, they've made all of their handles four and an eighth. So it doesn't matter what thickness you buy here, they're going to make it thin enough to feel um, small enough for the hand. So that would be the one differentiator I would say between these two. But other than that, you can't go wrong with any of them. They're priced similarly. If you look at all these paddles, you can see our codes below in the description. Thank you for using our code. That helps us keep the lights on, helps us keep bringing you these reviews so you can make informed decisions on your paddle purchases. And I wanna thank Daimon, Hudef, and 60 for sending us these paddles. We appreciate that. And, um, and you wanna check out a different brand, check these out.